The objective of this video is to do some buffer calculations where the concentrations of the conjugate base and the weak acid are different. In the videos previously, we saw that the concentrations of weak acid and conjugate base were identical, which would cause this term here to cancel out and be zero, where you would have pH equals pKa. Well, let's look at some problems where these two concentrations are not the same and see what impact they have on the pH. And in doing this, I want you to predict the shift in pH as we change these two values. What's the pH in this situation? Where we have the equation set up, we're 4.75 plus the log of 0.2 over 0.1 molar. Now remember, here's the equation, and this top number here is the conjugate base. So just think of this as being a base. And the denominator is, well, the weak acid, modeled as HA. So just think of this as, well, just an acid. Now, it seems to me that we have more base floating around than acid. Before, when we had equal amounts of acid and base, the pH was simply the pKa. But now we have slightly more base. So my question for you is the pH of this solution going to be greater than 4.75 or less than 4.75. Now think about this. The more acidic solutions, the lower the pH. So if you're acidic, the solution's acidic, it's going to be low pH, relatively speaking. If it's a basic solution, it's going to be, well, relatively high pHs. So look at what we have here. A little more base than acid. There's the pH if we had equal amounts of acid and base. So now the question is, is the solution pH going to be greater than 4.75 or less than 4.75? I'm going to erase this, but give that a thought. Well, if you predict greater, you're correct, because it works out that the pH is 5.05. I encourage you to plug these numbers in this fraction and work out the log and verify, in fact, that the pH is going to be higher and will be 5.05. This check, this, uh, this sort of little check here before you number crunch is a good way to determine if your number crunching was, in fact, correct. Because if you were given this problem and you came up with a pH of like 2 or 4, negative 8, or something, something small, uh, you could go back and ask yourself, or say to yourself, that doesn't seem to be right, because it doesn't make sense, because I have slightly more base than acid, so that pH should be slightly above 4.75. Now, it shouldn't be something like 10 or 12 or 15, but it should be something slightly larger. I have a few problems I'd like you to try. Here's a problem. The same pKa, 4.75. In this case, we have 0.1 molar conjugate base and 0.2 molar weak acid. First, ask yourself, should that pH be greater or less than 4.75? And then go ahead and calculate it and see if it works out to be correct. So pause the video and give that a try. Well, if you came up with 4.44, which is less than 4.75, indicating that it's slightly more acidic, you'd be correct. Because it's got to make sense. A little more acid than base, so it's going to bring the pH down just a bit. I have a couple more for you to try. In this case, pKa is 9.89. 
So we have slightly more conjugate base than acid. So what's your prediction? First, if it's going to be greater than or less than 9.89. And then actually determine the pH using the calculator. Pause the video and then come back and check your answer. Well, if you predicted slightly more basic, you'd be correct, because we have a bit more base floating around. So the pH does go up a little bit. We've got one more for you to try. In this case, we have the pKa 9.89, same as before. But we have the opposite. We have a little bit more acid floating around than base. Let's pause the video and try that out. Well, if you predicted a little bit more acidic than 9.89, something less than 9.89, you'd be correct, because the actual pH is about 9.72.